it turns out that there are four types of negative feedback. These follow from the four types of amplifiers. Now, sometimes there's more than one way to model an amplifier. Let's go through the four different types. A voltage amplifier has an input voltage and an output voltage. The gain, A, is dimensionless. The input and output impedances are arranged as shown. A current amplifier has input current and output current. The gain of a current amplifier, A, is dimensionless. The input and output impedances are arranged as shown. With a voltage amplifier, it's desirable to have a high input impedance. With a current amplifier, it's desirable to have a low input impedance. With a voltage amplifier, it's desirable to have a small output impedance. With a current amplifier, it's desirable to have a high output impedance. In a trans-resistance amplifier, the input would be a current and the output would be a voltage. Therefore, A needs to have units of ohms. Finally, in a transconductance amplifier, the input would be a voltage and the output a current. The gain A in a transconductance amplifier would have units of inverse ohms. Some people also call this unit MOS. All four of these amplifiers are merely mathematical models. Sometimes it's all right to choose one model or another model depending upon the situation. There are four types of negative feedback. Series shunt, shunt shunt, series series, and shunt series. It depends on whether the input to the amplifier is voltage or current. And this table shows what units the gain A would have in that particular feedback network and what units beta would have in the feedback network as well. Let's look at the series shunt configuration first. The input should be a voltage, the output a voltage, and the error or the sum would also be a voltage. We'll assume that the feedback is negative. If beta is negative, then the sum voltage would be less than the input voltage. I'm also implicitly assuming that A is positive. If the amplifier is inverting, then beta would have to be positive in order for the loop gain to be negative. Let's write down the equivalent circuit for both of these situations. The summing operation in the feedback network adds the input voltage with some fraction of the output voltage. At the output side, it looks like a line is attached to the output of the amplifier, but in my equivalent circuit, there's no line attached right here. That's not a mistake in my circuit model. It just indicates that in this particular feedback model, the feed is only back. There's no feed forward in the model. Of course, if we actually have a circuit that implements a negative feedback network, if beta is implemented with the resistor, then we also expect some feed forward through the network. That's not captured in this particular circuit model. That's why I've not included any line right here. My goal at this point is to find the effect of the feedback on the input and output impedances of the amplifier. The input impedance without the feedback network of the amplifier is just the input impedance of the amplifier itself. The output impedance without the feedback network is just R out. However, there's a controlled source and generally we need to be very careful with controlled sources because we can't just short the controlled source when calculating impedances. In this particular situation, I can, because when we calculate the output impedance, I should set the input to zero. If Vn is zero, then the output impedance is clearly just R out. Let's label our input and output impedances with the feedback network attached. Because we have a controlled source at the input side, I can't merely short it. The proper way now to find the input impedance is to attach a test source and find the current through that source. The input impedance for this circuit is the ratio of the input voltage to the input current. Let's write the input voltage in terms of V sum first. We can now substitute this equation here. For the current, I can apply Ohm's law to this particular resistor. I can identify this ratio as the gain A of the amplifier inside the feedback network. I can see that for the series shunt configuration, the feedback network serves to increase the input impedance because the quantity A beta is a negative number. Let's now look at the output impedance. When calculating the output impedance of a circuit, we need to turn off the source. 
we should now attach a test source to the output side of the circuit. The output impedance of the circuit is given by the ratio of the output voltage to the test current. We can find the test current by applying Ohm's law to the output resistor. Since the input is now turned off, I know that V sum is now just beta V out. Let's now invert both of these numbers. And finally, we conclude that the feedback network has served to lower the output impedance because A beta is a negative number. We've essentially just confirmed line one on this chart, which summarizes the effect of negative feedback on gain, input impedance, and output impedance for each of the four feedback types. Now, the types are called series shunt, 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 series, series, and shunt, series. And I've not really said yet what series and shunt mean. But basically, at the input side, if it's series, then we're talking about a voltage source. And if it's shunt at the input side, we're talking about a current source. The opposite is true on the output side. I'll show some examples. In any particular amplifier, one can typically tell by inspection whether or not we're dealing with series or shunt input and series or shunt output. The method that I like to use is the following. Imagine that you are a small insect, like an ant, and you're crawling on the wire at the input side of an amplifier. If you can crawl yourself all the way to the gate of a transistor or the base of a transistor or to the edge of the amplifier without crossing the feedback line, then it's called series input. If you're crawling towards the amplifier and you cross the feedback path, then it's called shunt input. The same thing is true at the output side. If the feedback network attaches to the wire in a junction, then it's called shunt output. Again, if you're a small insect crawling towards the amplifier and you cross the feedback path, then it's called shunt feedback. If, on the other hand, you can walk all the way to the amplifier without crossing the feedback path, then it's called series output. In the next video, let's look at a few examples.